Welcome to another Word Defibrillator to kickstart your day with I, Sean Collard. I want to establish something first. So Ephesians uh, 2, 6, he said, He raised us up together with Him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with Him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. What this means is you and I, because we are in Christ, we, we is Jesus at this moment in time. He is seated in the right hand of the Father. So because we are in Christ, and let me try and ask you, uh, go through a question with you, and you tell me. All right, so there's an envelope, and there's 10 rand inside that envelope. All right, now you close that envelope. If I put that envelope in water, where's that 10 rand? It's in water because it's in the envelope, right? If I take that envelope and I throw it in the air, where's that 10 rand? It's in the air because the 10 rand's in the envelope and the envelope is in the air. If I take that envelope and I throw it in the fire, where's that 10 rand? It's in the fire. Well done, because the envelope's in the fire. So if you and I are in Christ Jesus, and Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, where are we? seated at the right hand of the Father. Brilliant. Okay, so remember, when we pray and when we chat to God and when we look at Scripture, it's because we are in the throne room. We don't use Scripture to get in. We use Scripture for the outside. All right? So when we pray, we've got to pray as if we're sitting in. Now, you can try this, and I have, and it's quite a disturbing way to do it because... I was very uncomfortable in the beginning. I didn't know what to say. So if I theoretically sit in my lounge and I look at the seat that I'm sitting on, because of Ephesians 2.6, it says that I am sharing the same seat as Jesus Christ, right? So he's sitting next to me. Good. So if he is seated at the right hand of the Father, I'm at the right hand of Jesus. He's to my left. And then the Father is to the left. You get that? So now when we pray, now... Be, in, in us getting into heaven. So let's just freeze it there for a moment. We're just going to go a little bit further. Now, it says he raised us up together with him and made us to sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. This is in the Amplified Version, the Anointed One. So it's not just Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Anointed One. He is the Savior, the King of Kings. We need that revelation. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ Jesus. So this is the Father in Christ showing his love because and through Christ to us. Now this is very important when it comes to our responsibility as men and women of God. In verse 8, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor. Now, unmerited means there's nothing that you can do to get it. That's it. It's a given. It's not a taken. It's a gift. For it is by his free. Now, it's crazy that he says free. He's just letting us know this is truly free. It is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved. Delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It, can, it came not through your own striving. It, is, it, comes, sorry, it came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. So salvation is a gift. It's something that you cannot lose. You, cannot, you don't have to defend it. You don't have to argue against it because it's a gift. And the person who justifies that is the giver. So if anyone says, oh, no, no, you're not saved. You say, well, God gave it to me as a gift. Go argue with him because it's a gift from the Father. Not because of works, verse 9, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do. So no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. Nobody gets you saved. God will use people as a tool to communicate through in order to connect with you and I 
in order for us to hear what he is saying, witness within our spirit, and in our faith give our lives to Christ, and in that the, self, the gift of salvation is received. It's a gift that is already there. It's not something we have to do to make it a gift so we can take it. It is already a given to us without anything to do other than to receive. And this is what it's saying. It's an absolute free gift. So because of that salvation, we are in the throne room of God. That's why it says you can approach the throne with boldness, the throne room of grace with boldness, because you are in Christ. It's got zero to do with what we've done. It's got everything to do what, with what Christ has done. He is the righteousness. Because he is righteous and we are in him, we have access to that. Got it? So now when we are sitting in the throne room, when we pray, like we demonstrated last week, our Father, who? Well, it's our Father, mine and Christ. We're sitting on the same chair, aren't we? So our Father, mine and Christ, who art, where is he? In heaven. Because where are we sitting? In heaven, Ephesians 2, on the same chair. Hallowed be thy name. I'm acknowledging who you are. I'm acknowledging whose I am. It's not who we are, it's whose we are. And whose are we? We are children of the living God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Now this is where it gets fa fan fancy. Thy kingdom come, where are we? We are sitting in the throne room, we are in the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, where? Outside. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is, where? As we are seated here in heaven. So when we are seated in the throne room, what are the conversations that we have? Because it's kingdom conversations. You see, when we're outside the throne room trying to do right things to get in, then we talk about things of the world. But when you're sitting in the throne room, and what's happening in the throne room as it is in heaven, may it happen on earth. So we are, through prayer, the physical manifestation of the kingdom of heaven. We've got to sit in that throne room, understand how the kingdom operates, and then pray it in to the physical realm. So is there healing in the throne room? Absolutely there is. So Lord, we thank you for a physical manifestation of the healing as it is in heaven to manifest on earth. You got it? Good one. So is there joy in the throne room? Then if it's in the throne room, let's pray it on earth. You see, what, whatever we loose on earth is going to really be discussed in the heaven, right? So you can only loose on earth what is loosed in the heaven. You can only bind on earth what is bound in heaven, in the throne room. So peace, joy, happiness, contentment, patience, all the fruits are discussed in the throne room. And we pray for those to manifest. Now, if you have that, and I trust that you do, and you don't, it's not for you to agree. I just need you to understand, okay? Now, this comes, here comes that part where I want to share with you, where it's going to be extremely challenging for a few of us. You ready? So, does the word money ever get discussed in heaven? Is money a heavenly term? Is money discussed? Is it a kingdom generated entity? Was money produced in heaven? Because I pray for a lot of money all the time, money for this, money for that, money for this person. Oh, if I had a million rand. Now you see, if I'm sitting in heaven, I've got to have heavenly conversations. And I seriously don't believe money is discussed in heaven. It's not a kingdom generated term. But what is a kingdom generated term is Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. But you shall earnestly remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. So what God does talk about in heaven 
is wealth. And wealth is a wealth of things. It is huge. It is massive. If he chooses to manifest wealth on earth in our lives through finances, he'll do it. Through gold, he'll do it. Through people, through revelation, through spirit, everything is included in that word. And crazy enough, he says, I'll give you the power to get it. So no human being who, in inverted commas, has wealth, has it without the Father giving them the power to get it. And as he gives, he can take away, depending on how it is messing with our relationship with him. So when we're having conversations in heaven, we need to use heaven's terminology. And we need to understand that we have it already, and that's our job to pray it so it can manifest on earth. Make sense? Yeah. <gasps>